Hi, Anti Society! Welcome back to the Anti Social Planet, and today we are checking out episodes 18 and 20 of Vinland Saga. So, we had a very important moment happen in the last episode where we had Knut really stepping into his own and, you know, dealing with the death of Ragnar, but also dealing with the fact that he doesn't have anyone to look after him, protect him, tell him what to do. He's very much on his own, and it was a moment of him growing up and seeing the world for what it is, and not liking it. And I think that that's the big reason for his change is he sees the world for this like pointless fighting and violence and people not getting along and a lot of it stemming from him as someone who is in line for the throne and people wanting to control that power or be connected to that power. And he sees all this maneuvering and this pain from it and he doesn't see a point to it. He doesn't see the meaning behind all of this chaos and violence that's going on and he wants to put meaning into it. Him basically saying, I want there to be a better reason for this, like an, a better place to channel this energy towards. So seeing him really step into that role of a potential ruler and him growing up a lot in, in that moment, and I think that it says a lot about the hopes that a lot of characters have put on Knut, at least with people like Asklad and him really wanting to see King Arthur specifically in in Knut and wanting someone like King Arthur to follow and have meaning in his life too like Knut wanting there to be more meaning in general to people's lives and Asklad wanting something more to his life as he comes to grips with his mortality and the fact that he doesn't have forever anymore you know he's not young and he doesn't feel invincible and he sees that he has a limited time left and he wants to make something of it other than just fitting into this you know viking lifestyle that he has so far so i think it'll be really interesting to see what happens when asklad sees Knut in this changed form and we left with Knut en route to go and see thorkel and make some kind of deal convince him to go over to his side we have these like three kind of separate groups right now with thorkel and then Asklad and his small group, and then the army that Asklad used to control that is now against him, that is mostly killed off at this point by Thorkel's men. So there's all this separation and infighting and, and conflict, and I really want to see Kanet come into this situation and make amends between these groups and find the, the things that connect them together. But we also have Thorfinn and Thorkel fighting each other. Thorfinn was thrown quite a distance by Thorkel and landed in some trees, so we'll see how he's doing with that. We're kind of at this moment of extreme conflict between all of these these people right before Knut comes in and I'm assuming brings some kind of peace. I'm hoping some kind of peace. So I don't know where we're going to fall exactly in that story if we're going to follow some more with Thorfinn and Thorkel, especially since there is a history with Thorkel and Thors. So I really want to get some kind of flashback with where that was coming from. But as it is, I feel like we've come to a an important turning point in the story. So let's check out episode 19 in three, two, one, go. Did they find Thorfinn? He's a little dazed. He did get thrown. So, understandable that he'd be a little bit disoriented. Yeah. <laughs> the adrenaline kicked in there. Oh, he's definitely still alive. He's fueled by rage. Oh no! Ooh. You was he gonna like set it? Oh, are we gonna actually get some backstory? I feel like Thorkel wants to tell the story of Thors. Um, 
Not only because I feel like there's probably some admiration there, given that Thoris is known to be one of the better fighters, and I feel like Thorkel would just find that a lot of fun. Um, but also, he sees a lot of potential in Thorfinn. Like, he's fascinated by Thorfinn, both on his own merit, but then knowing that he's Thor's son, um, I think he just wants to see what Thorfinn does with the information, um, see some of Thor's in, in Thorfinn. I think there's, you know, a personal reason for wanting to talk about it. I'm sorry, I got stuck in my head for a second. <laughs> I was thinking about things and I got stuck in my head. <laughs> oh, his arm, though. I'm sure that Thorfinn's not gonna like needing Asclad's help with that. You know that he was strong if Thorkel was pointing that out. Oh, I guess we haven't really... We, we had some hints that his mother was more wrapped up in this than Thor's was. Oh, okay! <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> this is the word that we saw before. Oh, goodness. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> I was like, seeing so much emotion from Thorkel is odd, but it was like, I wanted to fight him. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> that makes more sense. Is he trying to get his family out? Mm, this was after they thought he was dead, but he came he came back to get his family. So he knew. I didn't think that Thor's, Thor's would have come back. They're trying to be discreet, Thorkel. Mm -mm. He's leaving, leaving.
<laughs> I get that he wouldn't understand. I feel like it's kind of like what Kanut went through of like him seeing that there wasn't meaning to the fighting anymore. Like there was more, he saw that there was more meaning in his family than in fighting someone else's fight. Oof. That's a powerful thing to say. Stickin is able to prove it, so... Did he beat... Thorkel? Barehanded? Jesus. It makes sense that he was asking that about, like, what is a real warrior? Like, he wants to understand why Thor's left. He was a dad. He never agreed to tell you anything. Ooh. <laughs> I guess Thorkel doesn't know that Asclad is the reason that Thor's is dead, because I feel like that would put a wrench in this. That's true. He will stick to his word on that one. We're gonna have a team up. I don't know if they've ever truly teamed up. We've had like Thor, uh, Thor's, Thorfinn, oh my goodness, <laughs> too many Thor's, Thorfinn follow orders, but um, not necessarily them agreeing to work together. Making fun of him like he isn't about to shake things up as he shows up. Oof. Poor bystander. <laughs>
Ooh, so they've crossed paths before. <laughs> that was a bit close with the sword, the knife. I like that Askeladd is leaning into the fact that he's more of a strategic thinker, whereas, like, Thorfinn is more about, like, speed and agility. I was gonna say, is it the light? Well, dang. Well, Thorfinn. Thorfinn. Jesus. No, you gotta let him go. Thorkell agreed. Gotta stick to his his word. Oof, he looks a bit crazed. Ooh. Brave. He's gonna at least earn respect. Hello, Knut. Good timing? Well, I guess not if you're Thorkel's eye. Yeah, they're gone. Ooh, except the one who's, uh, his brain is gone, though. Like, he's a empty shell now. True. <laughs> Feel better? Okay. <laughs> You're over 50 years old? Jeez. Yeah, he's not going anywhere that can it.
<laughs> the confidence. Not anymore. Not just a bargaining chip anymore. He is kind of casting his ship chips in with your brother. True, things would go smoother if he wasn't around. True safe face. That would be more interesting, Thorko. Just saying. I don't think so. Ooh, the way he didn't flinch. The respect. If you gain Thorkel's respect, he's gonna wanna... He's going to want to at least be intrigued, you know? Like, he's gonna wanna see more of it. See, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, it's a similar thing to connect that Thor's went through. I think he's going to be fascinated by that. He's going to want to, he's trying to understand what Thor's shift was. And now he sees it again. True. Switch sides again. <laughs> Smile, though. Like, Knut knew exactly what he was doing. Vindicated. That's what's wrong with him. He's like, whew, that paid off. <laughs> Hoping it would. Ooh. I don't know if we've ever seen Asklad bow. Oh. Okay. I thought he was gonna have to find out about that, but Asklad's just like, hmm, here's the information.
that anger, though. Like, he's still upset about Ragnar's death, but he's also in a different place. <laughs> okay, children, get along. <laughs> I love how Thorka's just like, let's be friends. She's like, I killed off your entire army, but let's be friends. No harm, right? Work <laughs> uh, is scary, but he's also kind of funny. <laughs> I really liked that for that we started with like the flashback with Thorkel and Thors, and specifically about like their interaction after Thors decided to leave. That was something that we didn't really get any information about. We saw him like after he went overboard and then he like washed up on land, but we didn't see like really the ramifications of that. It just like cut to when he was already a father and in Iceland and all of that stuff. So seeing some of the aftermath of him like sneaking out and having that interaction with Thorkel, showing that he was very changed after that. And it clicked in my brain while watching it that it's very much a parallel of what Kanit went through of being someone who thought that there was a purpose to what they were doing or at least had been told that there was a purpose to what they were doing, following orders, having someone tell them where they should go and what they should do as Thors did in a position of being a commander but still having someone above him telling him what to do and then getting to a point where they saw the conflict around them for what it really was and it it wasn't what they wanted. It wasn't the true meaning of what they should be fighting for. There was an emptiness to what they were doing. So having that parallel between those two of Thor's and Knut as the linking point between why Asklad and Thorkel have so much respect now for Knut, or at least want to see what happens. You know, they can see the potential in him and want to stick around to see where that potential ends up. I think it's just going to be a matter of when Thorfinn sees that connection, because I think that that will pull him out a little bit more from what he's been going through of like being fueled by like rage, basically. I think part of it too is that him and Kunit have a lot of similarities in their story, so I feel like they can bond over that similarity of having like father figures dying being this pivotal part of who they are and shifting who they are. I think the difference is that Kunit found a way of being like productive <laughs> with those emotions and taking a more mature route in that, whereas Thorfinn is very much stuck, like I've said before, in that moment. Like the moment that he saw his father die, that is where he is. He has paused in that spot, even though he's grown up since then. He's still that little kid who watched his father die in front of him, and he just can't get out of that point. He doesn't want to get out of that point because that's what motivates him. You know, the only meaning he has in his life is fight Asklad, win in a fight against Aslad. And that's the only thing that he has. It's the reason he wakes up, he eats, he survives other battles, is to have that moment. And if he loses it, he doesn't know what he's existing for anymore. So he needs needs to hold on to it. I think it's going to be a growing experience for Thorfinn to interact with Knut because there's similarities in their stories, but also because there's a lot of Thors in Knut's story now, like in his personality, how he presents himself, and the way that he chose a different direction to deal with this particular father figure death. He was a lot older, so I think he has some advantage in that, in that he was a little bit more capable of processing through it than Thorfinn was, who was just super young and didn't know how to deal with any of the stuff going on, let alone watching his father die. Like, there was a lot of trauma mixed up in a very short amount of time and he was left on zone to figure it out and survive so very different ways of processing through that moment and i think that that's what's going to help thorfinn get beyond this point like even just a little bit he's very much stuck in where he is so i think as soon as he starts to grow a little bit it's going to be this exponential growth into him becoming this person who he should be after the aftermath of everything that he's been through as opposed to just kind of letting the anger eat him alive so a lot of interesting team-ups now as everybody sort of comes together and tries to just ignore that they have tried to kill each other, succeeded in killing each other, hurt each other in a lot of ways. I mean, Thorkel is down two fingers and an eye since he's met Thorfinn, and I guess they just have to, like, move on from that now? Thor Thorkel seems like a very forgiving person, but I don't know how Thorfinn is going to process through it, but let's get into episode 20 and see what this alliance leads to. In three, two, one, go.
Ooh. I guess it would be some issues if Thorkel took his army and left, switched sides again. Mm-hmm. Ooh. That is how it went. He's a different person now. <laughs> I like how Thorkel's like, let's pick a fight immediately. <laughs> yeah, they've teamed up. You're in a little bit of trouble, aren't you? They did not know who they were about to be dealing with. Ooh. I love that we're skipping so fast to like the confrontation between like Knut and his father, like them having to meet eye to eye because it's going to be an interesting dynamic because we haven't seen them interact together at all except some of the flashbacks when he was really young. So now that he's so different and he's older, both like like physically in terms of age, but also because he's older in terms of knowledge and um, how he now sees the world, I really want to see what that kind of showdown is going to be. Especially with like the contrast of them with someone like Knut, who's very youthful, um, has some, you know, conventional beauty features, you know, of um, what is like the most like Western Caucasian that you can possibly be. Um, again, contrast against like what we've seen of the king, which is very like sickly old. There's this like colors drained from him. Um, and he's a bit darker in terms of color palette, whereas like Knut has more warmer colors. So seeing the contrast between those two figures, you know, the young up and coming leader of Knut and then this like older leader who's been through a lot of stuff um, and is kind of at the end of his reign, both in terms of like age, but also it seems like he's losing authority over his people. You're asking him to be strategic? <laughs> yes, basically. <laughs> mm. Actually, it is good to have that separation. Like, Thorkel, like I said, is a little bit more able to mend ties between people and then you have like Asklad who's very strategic and does it better in a more like political setting true <laughs> He's going to continue to be like that.
I feel like Thorfinn's gonna be the only one that uh, kind of actually gets along with in some way. Like, other people are strategic to have around him. Whereas, like, Thorfinn is... Like, doesn't treat him any differently than anybody else. He doesn't want anything from him. Oof. A... Finland, perhaps? <laughs> Oh, the, like, dilapidated church, too, is very symbolic of how Knut is feeling about the whole religion thing. Oof. That whole, I'll turn into a demon if I have to. I feel like that's another thing that Thorfinn can relate to. Like, if you have to become something vicious to get what you want. He's done that. Are you... Oof. I was like, I don't believe that he's actually happy to see Knut. True, it's almost like a game of chicken, isn't it? Especially if they attack first, or they seem aggressive first, then it justifies attacking, right, from the king's part. Not exactly the face of someone who's in their prime that you would look up to, huh? Ooh, I think it's a little that he only bowed after Knut, like, pushed him to. Yeah, you know, he's obeying Knut, not this king. True. Just, I guess, kind of to the king. This is informal. This is very in, like intense. There's a <laughs> tense feeling to this whole interaction of who's gonna flinch first. I don't know if that's a compliment. That glimmer in his eye, though, of the little bit of emotion to that comparison between them.
then I guess you know what Kunit has in mind then. Thorfinn, Thorfinn already ready to pick fights with the king. Mm -hmm. Interesting that we're immediately going to stealing treasure from other people. Ooh. It's an interesting way to not take responsibility for your actions. Bold statement. Ooh, he struck first. I feel like straight up, like, <laughs> the tension in this is just, like, getting to be a little bit. <laughs> Oof, don't bring up religion. He's giving that up. I wonder who he's asking permission from, because we saw both Knut and the king kind of give him permission. That is a strategic way to go about it. He said, use your power and increase your power. This would increase it. Ooh, avoidance. I don't know if I believe that. Ooh, the facial expression, though. Keep it together. You know it's something intense if even Thorfinn's like, um, <laughs> whatever you just said, don't say it again. <laughs> sure, just casually threaten to kill your son and then walk away. Nothing weird about that. I guess not this time. 
with kings and what have you. I mean, killing him directly in the throne room seems like a bad way to cover up that you weren't the one that killed your son. It's true. He said so himself. I agree. <laughs> he's a little bit more emotive of what he's invested in now. It's not just like money and reward and that kind of stuff anymore. <laughs> Huh! I was like, what happened to the priest? And then... <laughs> so the priest cleaned up. <laughs> I don't know, there's something pure to the fact that Thorkel just is, right? First move is what he went for with that. I like seeing that they're like on equals for this. Like they're equally working together at this moment. I feel like he's trying to lay this on too thick. Oh. I didn't know that Ragnar had a brother. Oh. He just kind of dropped that information about his brother, though. Definitely changed. I feel like there's going to be a lot of people that are, like, interested in manipulating the prince now, though. Yeah, it was like, I don't know if he's a loyal either. He seemed to be trying too hard to convince the prince that he was so distraught that he 
had left. Hello. I mean, at least he seems happy. Oh, I was wondering what happened to Bjorn because we haven't seen him. Oh, ironic. <laughs> I was glad. Oddly harsh, but also touching. <laughs> I feel like that's just what Asklad is. I'm like, I don't know how to feel about you, because for all of, like, the harsh things that he does, he also, like, has these weird moments of, like, acting noble. <laughs> it's this weird mixture for me where I'm like, I don't know how to feel about you. Is that Thor's friend still looking for Thorfinn? Still on the lookout? Oof. I keep forgetting that's a thing that has we have to come back to officially. <laughs> I really like that we're getting into this moment of it switching from previously where it was physical conflict, so it was like physical wars between forces, it was people getting hurt in actual confrontations with each other with like swords and axes and weapons and stuff, and now we've switched to a battle of strategy. So it's how do you navigate talking to someone, how do you get information that's useful to you, how do you know who to trust, how do you offer someone the right thing so that they either are on your side or don't interfere with what you're doing. Like it's all these different threads of how to navigate in this place, especially since we had the one line where Asklad was like, remember that you're surrounded by enemies and he meant like literally Knut was like physically surrounded by people who worked for his father that were ready to kill him. But also it's the whole place, right? He said, I don't have any allies here except for the people he brought with him, which is a big reason why he had Thorkel like talking to people and interacting with them. Because like I said before, there's something weird about Thorkel where like, I don't know, he just has this way of mending bridges between people or just like acting in a way that like makes you laugh or makes you smile because he's kind of ridiculous and over the top which can be scary if you're on the the receiving end of some of his more violent tendencies but it also makes him very like jovial and he just kind of goes with the flow and does what he wants and because of that I feel like a lot of people are drawn to him so it works oddly well to have him like just in charge of talking to people and getting them to like him and trust him and want to side with him as opposed to you know someone like Aslad who probably could get people to like him because he's good at like talking but he's much more useful in a situation where it's about like navigating those like political conversations and conflicts as opposed to Thorkel who isn't exactly like tactful when it comes to talking to people nor is he always the best at reading the room and acting appropriately to that I, again he just kind of does what he wants so Asklad being there to be more in tune with what's going on even like Thorfinn is very in tune with his surroundings and reading people and knowing where threats are so having him near uh, Knut is like useful but also he's 
one of the more experienced fighters here and the most like nimble and is probably the most capable of protecting Knut physically. It's interesting to see what each of the characters' roles are now that Knut is trying to like build this like system of people around him that he can rely on. It's really interesting to see that shift in how the conflicts are, like what the main conflicts are and how they're handled as opposed to the kind of all-out brawls that we saw earlier on. So I like getting to see that shift the closer that they get to the actual like power of this whole struggle the more it becomes about being strategic and, and needing to be better than just being good in a fight you know so it's it's more about who you know how you know them how much you trust them what you can offer people that kind of a thing the complexity you know ramps up as as the conflict shifts to more powerful positions i'll be i want to know when we're going to see harold show up in that like in into this whole thing and cast his chips into this whole who's going to be the king conflict that we've shifted into you can click this playlist to go and see my previous reactions or you can subscribe so this next time i post a villain saga reaction and i will see you in the next video bye